Hi, I'm Dennis Rodkin. I write the deal estate column for Chicago Magazine, and this is DEQs, where I answer readers' real estate questions. Liz in Glenview asks, The last house that sold near us went for $195,000, when the people had bought it for over $300,000 four years ago. A few others in our neighborhood have prices in the $300,000s and have sat there for a year or two. So when our neighbors put theirs up for sale at $410,000 in April, we thought they were in for a long wait. No, it went under contract at the end of June. They say for almost their asking price. What did they do right that the rest of the neighborhood is doing wrong? Liz, I would bet that the other sellers in your neighborhood are all asking themselves that very question. I looked at the listings in your neighborhood and the one that appears to be selling for 410 really is nice inside. It looks professionally staged. Everything is meticulous, great colors, really nice furniture, not a speck of clutter, and there are even some nice pictures of the garden in full bloom, which I assume were taken a year prior and stockpiled for sale time, which is a great thing for anybody to do. It looks really good inside, but that doesn't fully explain why the house would sell at a boom year's price when others in the neighborhood haven't. So here are a few possibilities I've come up with. One, maybe it's actually selling for less than your neighbors have let on. It hasn't closed, so we don't know the sale price. Uh, but it's entirely possible that they've actually taken a much lower offer than they've let you think. However, let's not assume for the moment that they're lying to you. Let's move to other possibilities, like that it's a cash purchase. One reason that would account for a higher price is that buyers, when they're paying cash, are more likely to go for a higher price because they're actually paying exactly that amount. If I pay $400,000 cash, I pay $400,000. If I finance my $400,000 purchase, I pay the four hundred dollars plus all the costs of financing over the course of 30 years, which jacks up my price considerably and my payment, not to mention. And a seller is more likely to take a cash purchase because they don't have to worry about the offer falling through. That's happening a lot now. I make an offer on your house and then it turns out I can't get that financing and you, the seller, are stuck waiting. Perhaps these sellers want to get out of town or want to get to their next home, so they took a cash price that would be maybe a little bit less, again, than they've let on. Another reason to think it's cash is that an appraiser uses local comps to set to establish the price, and there aren't local comps in the $400,000 range, as you've said. The other houses in the area haven't been selling for that, so if they go to the bank and try to put in a $400,000 contract, they won't be able to if it hasn't appraised at that level. And another reason would be maybe their agent was really sharp. That agent found interested buyers really fast and at a really good price. So I would suspect that the person marketed it right. You can tell it was staged. There are the great photos. I would imagine from the look of the interior that they went in and they fixed every little thing. They made sure that that house gleams, that it really shows well, that you're not going to walk through and say, well, I'd have to fix this, or well, I, I might have to fix that. It looks like I can move right in. Of course, that doesn't quite explain the $100,000 difference between the rest of the neighborhood, but it does suggest that you had an agent who really had some good ideas. The other possibility to consider is unrealistic buyers. These buyers didn't care what the market said. They saw that as their dream house and they paid what they needed to to get it right away. If they're planning to live there a long time, that's feasible. You have really good schools. Maybe they're planning to stay over the very long time and they figure, well, prices will come up to our level over a period of a number of years. So what can sellers in your neighborhood learn from this experience? They can't just jack up their price to meet the one that just sold. You're priced where you're priced and you can cut the price, but you have a very difficult time increasing it, especially in this market. They can, however, hope that these buyers are harbingers of a new interest in your area and that if they freshen up their houses a little bit, they might get a little new attention. The other thing they could do is they could invite that selling agent into their homes. That agent may have some really good ideas about how to freshen up the house, what to fix. Ask the agent to critique the house and more important, to critique the price. There might be something the person can say. And when their contract with another agent starts to expire, think about maybe using this other agent. But the primary lesson would be to make it gleam. That house looks so good compared to the others in the neighborhood. It looks like a magazine house. So you don't just get rid of the clutter and you don't just put on a new bedspread. You do what they did. You make the house a star. Thanks for your question. Send me more at dennis at rodkin.com.